Humans have been gazing at the stars for thousands of years, searching for answers. But it turns out we have a star right in our back garden. You might think there's not much to study in space, but it's actually filled with something called the solar wind. This is a flow of charged particles made up of positive protons and negative electrons, with only around 5 protons per cubic centimetre. These particles travel between 300 and 800 kilometres per second and are constantly hitting Earth. But before you panic and write news headlines, Earth is actually protected by a magnetic field. A gentle breeze of 400 km per second has no real effect apart from creating the northern lights. But much like weather on Earth, the solar wind can create extreme space weather events. These can damage satellites including GPS, knock out power grids which happened in Quebec in 1989, and even confuse homing pigeons. Since our lives are now heavily reliant on technology, such an event today could be catastrophic. Therefore, the more we know about the sun and the solar wind, the better we can prepare. The sun has a magnetic field similar to a bar magnet. The solar wind drags these field lines out into space, meaning they are only connected to the sun at one end and can either point away or towards the sun. The solar wind travels out along these open field lines which become straight past three solar radii. Looking from the side, we can see two hemispheres with opposite magnetic field directions. However, the sun is not perfect, meaning this pattern is actually more warped as this real image of the solar eclipse shows. From above, this creates different sectors of magnetic field direction at the sun's equator. The sun rotates once every 27 days, so although each particle moves in a straight line, the solar wind itself has a spiral pattern. Because of some fancy mathematics, the magnetic field also has this shape, known as the Parker spiral. In my PhD, I use several spacecraft to measure the solar wind directly and learn more about its structure. The first of these spacecraft to measure the solar wind is helpfully named WIND. This sits just ahead of Earth and can provide a 45 minute warning of any space weather events. Wind is very old and much like the TV show launched in the same year, it needed some friends. So NASA launched twin spacecraft to provide stereoscopic images of the Sun, although sadly we lost connection to Stereo B in 2014. Perhaps the most exciting mission is Parker Solar Probe, which was launched in 2018. This is the fastest ever man-made object and will travel closer to the Sun than any other spacecraft meaning it needs a large heat shield to stop it from burning up. The European Space Agency wanted to get in on the action, so launched Solar Orbiter in 2020. This does what it says on the tin and has a wide variety of instruments and telescopes. Finally, there is Bepi Colombo, whose true love is Mercury, which will orbit in 2025. But to pass the time on its seven-year journey, they figured it might as well measure the solar wind. All these spacecraft create a constellation, so we can measure many different points in the solar wind simultaneously. So in my PhD, I take wiggly data from all these spacecraft and turn it into knowledge about the solar wind. This can help forecast space weather events and prevent a blackout.